I told you guys, the root cause of a lot of these surgical table problems is because of a cable. How do we fix that? How do we prevent that from happening? I'm going to show you. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to show you guys how to fix some of these cables up close and personal. And I got a brand new tool that's going to help me out today. It's the Tom Love Digital Microscope, the model TM-DM10. And it can be a little bit pricey. I wish it had one other function, which would be computer connectivity. I haven't quite figured it out. If it does have it, if it doesn't, I'll be a little disappointed. But it's still a really good teaching tool because I can take video excerpts or still photographs of up close and personal items and I can incorporate them to my videos. So I'm actually kind of excited about this one. But guys, in order to fix these cables, we're gonna need a couple tools. First thing that you're probably gonna need is a dental pick. You see that? Just a really fine point dental pick. It's also got a broadside for scraping. You see that? You're gonna need some glue, hot melt glue. This stuff's like magic. Now I've used some of these in videos before. You're gonna see just how versatile this stuff is. You should have some in your shop. It really does work for a lot of applications. The other thing we're gonna need is some angle cutters or some wire cutters because we're gonna be taking little nips of the glue and we're gonna be incorporating them into the joint to help strengthen it, all right? Let's take a look up close and personal on the digital microscope. Yeah. Well guys, I'm sorry. I lost my audio, so let's try this with a voiceover and see if I can tell you guys exactly what's going on. So here you can see some of the fibers, some of the copper fibers that are basically broke off due to flexing and they're touching some of the other lines. You can see the orange and the red right there. Uh, the brown and the black are touching a little bit and you can see the green on the inside. Here we have the, um, the hook. I'm cleaning the glue off it. Anytime it gets dirty, you just heat it up with a heat gun and it makes all the glue just liquefy. And we're going to use this cleaned hook to situate all the little strands here you can see I'm poking the yellow strand back towards its base. Just got to get it away from the outer edge because we don't want it to touch the shielding, which will be a collar that fits around the outside. You'll see that in the very end. But uh, the red and the yellow here, just putting them together. So in between the wires we have to worry about, we also have to worry about the green wire that's in the middle of the connector. And this is the same process with all these types of connectors we have the same exact process. Whenever you have a little bit of fraying, all you got to do is get in there with a pick, separate out all the strands. It's very easy to do under a microscope. It just takes a little bit of time. And here we go. So I got some of the red copper right there that is almost touching the black. I do believe that those are the two that are causing a majority of the short problems. And I still got some of these yellow strands that are just irritating me. And I'm also using the pick to twist and straighten out some of the fibers that are near each other, like the black and the brown right there. And I think this is about it. I've got almost all of them straightened out. It's looking pretty good. Let's move on to the next step. We got to glue them. So here's where you gotta take your glue and you chip off little tiny pieces. See how I'm using the wire cutters here to just clip off little tiny ones. And we're gonna use those and stick those on the end of our dental tool. So I usually clip like three or four of them off because what you wanna do is you wanna have all your glue prepped before you're ready to start applying the glue because you want the connector to remain hot and uniformly hot. So you got to clip all your supplies, keep all your supplies laid out because when you start this process, you got to do it all at the same time. And here you can see how I poke it on the end of my stick, lay the connector out. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a heat source, like a heat gun and melt it right onto the wires. You can see it, melts very easily and I'm going to start and I'm going to try and focus the blob 
near the connector without getting too much of it on the connector itself. You see me blowing it away from the connector there. Well, that's because your shields are gonna sit over that connector and you don't want a bunch of glue there because then you won't have the same diameter as you should. So you see I put the blob right near all the copper strands and now I'm gonna blow the blob in between the wires. And you're gonna notice that my technique, I also roll the cable left to right and I keep it moving that way there I heat up all sides and I keep it nice and molten between all the strands. And what this glue is going to do is it's going to separate the copper conductors and at the same time it's going to create a, a better flex point than flexing the cables at the connector body. It's going to make it a little more rigid. So this is my second blob. I'm melting it and sticking it between the wires. And this actually looks reasonably well, but I think I'm going to go ahead and take another piece, stick another piece on there. So the most important thing that we have to remember is the dimensions of this has to be the same dimensions as the connector so that the shields fit on there correctly. And here you can see I'm rotating it around, taking a look at the glue around the conductors. They're all separated and now they're glued. All right, now noticing I've got a little bit of a hole here by the black wire and the red wire, you see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece, stick it right over that point, and I'm gonna melt that down into the connector, and that should be my final piece. You can see, because that's a little detailed point, I'm using a little tiny piece of glue, same process. I'm gonna heat it up, blast it down towards the connector body. You see how I'm blowing the glue towards the connector, not away from it? Just to make sure that I get it between all those wires. Rotating it because it's all molten. And make sure you don't set it down on the desk at this point. You don't want all those wires sticking to your desktop. That would be an absolute nightmare. Making sure that I got it hot on all sides. Make sure that you don't get any glue on the connector body itself because that's where the shields are going to sit. All right, here you can see the shield. It sits over the index point right there. And we're going to clamshell the second shield on there and we're going to push the collet nut right up to the back side of it. And then we're going to slide the sleeve over top. And one of the things I didn't really take notice of right there, you can see that there is a tiny little notch in the collet nut that has to fit in the base of the sleeve, the outer sleeve. So make sure you, that the collet nut is rotated correctly to fit into the base of the sleeve. And in this video, I didn't have it set up correctly right there. And the way to know is that the, the crimp nut, which is on the outside, it won't go all the way down. You can see right here, it stops a little bit. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? And then I remembered, ah, right there. So I got the crimp nut tightened down to where it should properly be. You should only see a couple threads. And the collet nut, which is on the inside, is correctly indexed at that point. So here you can see that um, I'm adding an extra zip tie 180 degrees out from the old zip tie. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's gonna add a couple extra millimeters worth of force because the connector itself is held into the body of the remote by the force of this rubber outer sleeve screwing into the remote. Well guys, that is pretty much it. That is a completed fixed cable, and it's not just for this type of cable. You can use these for all sorts of things, but just remember to keep the glue hot, keep it rotated, and blow it towards the connector, and then when you're finally done, before you plug it into the table or before you plug it into the microscope or whatever you're doing, make sure that you check the cable with an ohm meter to make sure that there's no continuity between any pins. If there's continuity between the pins, well, you got to do it all over again, or you got to give up on that cable, one or the other. But anyway, check your cable before you connect it to a medical device to make sure you have no continuity between the pins, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was informative for you. My first time using a digital microscope, and although the video is a little bit shaky, it really allows me to show you guys in detail what it is that I do and my technique. Thanks again for watching.